Welcome back. Uh, just recently I've been working on a couple of projects. The first one is uh, this old Grip True Chuck Pratt Bernard. Uh, I bought it years ago, got it off eBay. Um, and to be honest it was not exactly the best buy. The, the only useful uh, jaws were the old inside jaws. Uh, the outside, the normal jaws you use, were useless. They were bell mouth. Uh, and that's how I've been using it for years now. Anyway, I decided um, I'd try to regrind uh, the um outside drawers um i had tried in the past and failed to regrind them off the chuck because i didn't have a method of grinding the chuck drawers um on the lathe i figured that the uh, adjustment of the grip true mechanism would uh, be able to get uh, some concentricity. Uh, no, that didn't work out. So anyway, I pulled it apart, and as you can see, it must be one of the very earliest ones they made. What's missing is three screwing pins which hold the uh, pinions in place. God knows what holds them in place, but they're just loose. But it seems to work. Anyway, internally it seems to be pretty much okay. I, I, I took a tip from Stefan Gottswinter on how to do this. And the method was to drill holes in the uh, your face put pins in <clears throat> and then you can clamp it with the right pressure as if it was clamping a piece of work uh, ready for grinding and anyway, I'm just going to put this chuck back together it's pretty straightforward line it up one of these has got a mark on it somewhere. Number one chuck, number one key, uh, number one goes in there. That's number one. Gently, number two. put them back plate bolts in you don't have to loosen these to make an adjustment You just tighten these, well, 
don't drunk on them too hard, but uh, normal tightness. Well, one. Two, three. Okay. Now, as you can see, number one. Oh, there we go. And then the end of the scroll. Two. Now the trick of this uh, grinding method is you need some sort of ring that fits inside of these which is just the right size that leaves the uh, gripping face exposed and I thought that would be an easy job I'm sure I had some rings in the scrap bin that would suit but no I thought I was going to have to turn a ring from solid and then I found this, which is an old bearing race. And that just happens to be the right size. So with that in place, I tightened up. That just left the uh, jaw faces exposed. So that's mounted in the lathe and then I could grind it with my um, little oh, tool post grinder. This thing is, uh, is not great but it was good enough for that job. It obviously needs Uh, setting for concentricity after doing that job um, I've already done this job um, and it does work and it grips true now anyway the other job I've got in hand is to actually make a decent tool post grinder and for that purpose I've got some stuff arriving is part of it. It's another 600 watt motor. Um, which is going to mount together with a spindle onto the tool post. This one's adjustable to speed, it's up to 5000 revs per minute. It's 600 watt, as I say. Uh, so, what this needed was a pulley. Let me just get this off. The shaft is 14 millimeter, and I thought, you know, I'll splash out and get a 14 millimeter reamer. Um, I've had quite a lot of stuff from AliExpress and in most cases I've been quite happy with it this came from Aliexpress um, and I ordered a couple of reamers 16mm and this 14mm 14mm chucking reamer great makes it really easy to get a nice precise bore so Drilled, bored, half a mil undersize, 
and reamed with this thing and whoops look at the state of that it's way oversized it actually works out 14.18 mil the bore of that Fourteen point two, fourteen point one nine, which is way oversized. I mean that is <laughs> ridiculous. And I know what I'm doing with reamers. Uh, my lathe uh, tailstock is perfectly aligned. It's got a um, Albrecht chuck, which is about as accurate as you can get. Um, it's set up correctly. Um, there's no reason it should have ground that uh, reamed that much oversized and indeed when it's difficult to measure these things when you do measure this it's definitely oversized Fourteen oh five. So basically, it's bloody useless. I mean, I'm not going to send it back. It's not worth it. It only cost about, I don't know, about ten or twelve quid. That. Uh, but I'm going to email the guy and say, you know, look, <laughs> this thing is not an accurate reamer. And I've not tried to use the sixteen mil one. But that also measures oversize. Now oh, that's a 16mm one. Let's have a look. It's even worse, 1606. 1607. Well, that's never going to ream a 16mm hole, is it? Ah, stupid. That was cheap as well. Oh, going back to the uh, Grip True Chuck, you might ask, how on earth do you drill holes into hardened steel? Ugh. Hardened steel chuck drills. That was one problem I had. I had no, uh, or at least I thought I had no uh, carbide drills, suitable size. So what I ended up doing actually was to use uh, a 4 mil carbide uh, centre cutting milling cutter, end mill. Um, that did cut through it, that's just fine, but I knew it was going to cut oversize. So I had to make up some pins that were a bit larger than 4 mil, so they were a tight fit bang them in with the hammer and then about a week later in the drawer I found this Tungsten carbide drills which would have been perfect for the job I don't know when they were there which just goes to show have to keep track of what you actually got. So I need to do that again. Um, I've got some drills that will work. But you know that did a good good enough job. Uh, solve that problem. None of my other chucks uh, have that problem. But if they ever need grinding in the future, uh, that's the method I can use. Uh, what else have I got to say? Well, go mobile. One thing I forgot to mention about this uh, modification to the uh, depth stop is that it's got a secret. <laughs> it's got an extension that comes out, and as you can see, 
the amount of DTI on that. Very useful for trimming in the vise and so on, trimming in a piece of work where you've got to have the uh, DTI mounted on the machine head, not on the table. So I've got multiple uses. I'm building up my collection of mills and various cutters. And I've just received these, which are counter bores. In the past I've always used, just used an end mill. Uh, I thought I'd splash out 15 quid and get those. They're probably oversized as well. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. I'll catch you later. Bye.